Afrique Média. Le monde, c'est nous. Afrique Média. Le monde, c'est nous. Afrique Média. Le monde, c'est nous. Sports in the world. In as much as great sportsmen and women are highly respected, but those in the soccer game are most respected around the world. We have heard of great names like Pele, Maradona, Mila Roger, Eto, Messi, Ronaldo, and others. Many all over the world will always recall the great performance of the Indomitable Lions in the 1990s and was noted for the dominance in the sports domain, particularly in the 80s and in the 90s and also the early 2000s. But from the mid-2000 till date, many are wondering what is going on. The elections that brought Mr. Samuel Eto, who was welcomed as a great relief to the realm of the top job at Fekafoot, most people expected that things should have gone better, while others think that he is not the right person for the job. A lot of things are going on in Fekafoot, talking about technical aspects, specialists, reviewing, other corruption activities that have been going on and that those others are complaining about. But sport lovers, fans, think Eto Fis is the right person for the job and he's doing his best in order to keep the sporting domain active, the elite one, elite two, and all the other academics on point, and also do his best to make sure everybody falls in line with the dream and vision he has for Faker Foot during his four-year mandate as it goes on. We're going to talk about the saga which has been going on a couple of days now between Faker Foot and the activities on some of the regions, and we're going to analyze the decisions that have been taken this past days, and if the decisions are actually right ones in order to move the uh, Faker Foot forward. So ladies and gentlemen, this is what we are talking about today. Afrique Media. Le monde, c'est nous. Ladies and gentlemen, once more, you're welcome to the Pan-African Debate on your Pan-African channel, Africa Media. Today is the 8th of July, 2023, and I want to welcome you to this edition. Today, we're going to talk about sports, particularly football. We know football is making news all around the world. It's one of the most respected sporting activity, particularly on the African continent and even in Europe. And most people, when a football player or football activities are going on, you have thousands of fans that are going behind, clamoring to make sure everything works well and things should be on point. We're going to focus on Cameroon football in particular on this edition, talking about the activities that have been happening these past days and looking at the problems that are going on and if the solutions are actually there to make things get better. Since the coming to power of uh, Samuel Lutufis, who is one of the top players in Cameroon, who has made Cameroon, the name of Cameroon, go wild in the world. There are some countries that if you call somebody and say, I'm from Cameroon, they might not know. But if you say you're from Samuel Lutufis' country or Mila Roger, then they will know where you're from. Uh, he is the president of Feka Food and was elected to handle a four-year mandate. And he has just been one year and about four to five months in that particular seat. So today we're going to talk about what happened the past week with uh, one of his uh, the fourth vice president who resigned and a confidential letter which we saw on social media the effects of this letter the impact and looking at what is happening around the football uh, uh, association right now all the allegations that have been levied on corruption match fixing wrong handling of things and even those who do not support Mr. Samuel Eto during the, his uh, uh, election, they say they have been maltreated. So we're going to look at all this and what is to be done. So ladies and gentlemen, this is what we are talking about today. I present to you my panel, those who are with me in the studio and also on Zoom who are to throw more light on this topic today. We have uh, Senior Barrister Ashu Emmanuel. Good morning or afternoon to you. Good morning in the US, but here we are in afternoon. You're welcome to the program. Good afternoon, Emmanuel. Good afternoon to you esteemed televiewers it's always a pleasure being with you 
I hope uh, this topic is going to be a very nice, interesting one. Definitely. And, um, well, the euphoria that accompanied Mr. Samuel Dito's election is actually, it looks like it's piping down. And we are now facing the bitter realities of uh, his uh, governance. Okay, we're going to get the different views today. Thank you. You're a serious barrister and a legal mind in the studio. And so I really wanted you to be in the house today. We have Mr. Akepe Ashu. He's one of our consultants. He's an insurer. And we wanted him to in the studio with us today. You're welcome to the program. Thank you, Emmanuel. And good afternoon to all uh, football lovers worldwide. It's a pleasure to be here once again after a very long break. Mm -hmm. And uh, good afternoon to barrister. Uh, I think uh, I will be able to maybe give my only to best in what concerns uh, football and football management. Mm -hmm. uh, for a long time, I've been a sports fan, <coughs> a football lover. Mm -hmm. To talk about uh, football and football management today is another challenge. I hope uh, we'll be up to the task. Definitely. Thank you very much for honoring our invitation. We have Sango Jabba Joseph. He's all the way in the U.S. He's a football lover, football fan, and uh, he's also a Cameroonian who has been following the football uh, association and everything around football very much. So thank you very much for joining us on the program. Thank you, Inanga. Good afternoon, fellow viewers, and good morning to those in the US and this part of the world. Uh, I'm so happy to be with you all. I want to thank God for the presence of somewhere at all in the figure foot leadership because his coming has really brought out what we wanted. Maybe if he wasn't there, we wouldn't have known this truth which are now going on. So this, I believe this, um, this occasion today, this program today will really be a welcome one to all the world. Thank you. Over to Austria, we have Mr. Alfred von der Winkler. He's with us uh, on the program. He's an international referee. He's a Cameroonian, even though he's, he does his job outside Cameroon. So I needed him on the program today because we're going to watch a couple of videos and then he's going to give us his idea and his specialty if what we are seeing is correct. And also since he's in the football field, we needed him uh, in the studio today to also give his opinion. Good afternoon to you. You're welcome to the program. Yeah, good afternoon, Manuela. Nice to see you again on the platform. Uh, it's a Saturday here in Austria, and I'm, it's a very sunny day. And it's a pleasure to meet you once more, Bar Senior Barrister Egbert Ashu. Sorry, <laughs> I'm seeing you for the first time live. And uh, my brother in the US, nice to meet you. Thank you. And, uh, it's a pleasure. <laughs> we are online. My Asobek's colleague, nice to meet <laughs> you, and Sister Emmanuel and the other uh, viewers of Africa Media. It's nice to have you. Thank you very much for honoring our invitation. It's a great day, and we really wanted to talk about this. And the, the reason for this is definitely to look for a solution, to talk about what's happening, and look for a way forward. So that's why this program has been held today. So we're going to talk about critics. We're going to look at what has happened. Particularly, I will talk about uh, a 19-page letter that was sent. It was written confidential on the letter. We're going to look at how this letter leaked out. And the content of the letter, if it, it was worth it, is it to build the association? Is it the content of the letter that caused all the problem that we have uh, or which happened later? Because that particular letter, when the letter leaked out, a letter that was sent by the fourth vice president of Ikafut, who in the person of uh, Jalakwan Junior, who is the head of uh, Jalakwan Sports Academy in the Southwest region, in uh, Limbe in particular, he sent the letter to the president of Ikafut, Samuel Litofis, and it was stated that confidential. So we don't know how this letter leaked out, but the content of the letter has got so many people worried, those who are in support of it and others who are not in support of it. So prior to this letter, after the letter was leaked, then another action came up. We saw the president of Fika Food went down to Southwest, to Lima in particular, had a meeting with some other stakeholders. We did not see his fourth vice president, who is a person hosting, who was supposed to host him in the Southwest after that letter came up. And uh, decisions were taken and we learned he was suspended. After the suspension, another thing happened. Jalakwan, who is the first Pride president, wrote a letter resigning as the fourth vice president of Fikafoot, that he wants to have nothing to do with them again. And he even went as far as 
closing up or suspending his uh, academic, the Jalakwan Sports Academy. This has brought a lot of problems. Some people say he went too far. Others think it's the right move. Others are asking what's going to become the faith of the sports or the youths who were there in the school, the footballers. And in his later, he stated that he was going to put them in other academics, but people think it's just a rash decision. So we're going to talk about the why and did he actually go too far. Today, this morning, we got up, we saw another later which was stated that uh, Mr. Angela Kwan is going to have uh, a press conference which is going to take place on the 15th, that is Saturday, because many people have been trying to talk to him. It's good to hear from the horse's mouth, why did this happen? Why did he get to this level? Did, could there be another solution? And so probably that press conference, because we had to have him in the studio today, but since he wanted to do a general press conference, so uh, Saturday that would take place, but sport lovers, Legal minds, everybody wants to talk about it and see if the content of his later was worth everything that happened later. So this is what we are talking about today. The later is very long, 19 pages, so we cannot read it all live on air because we don't have that much time. But I'm going to give key points and then we'll talk about it. So. <coughs> We're going to watch a video in a couple of minutes, a video that was put on his uh, social media outlet or the Njalakwan Sports Academy outlet of one of the matches, but we're going to come to that somewhere in the middle of the program because he actually spoke about match fixing and corruption and all of that, and that's where he posted that video. So we're going to talk about that in a minute. So before we come to that, let me just begin with you, Barrister Ashu. Let's talk about this whole saga like since last week football in Cameroon, particularly in the English speaking region, because it's as if some people know about it in the French part, but they are not, it's not that uh, much or not that bad as we see Anglophones have taken to social media to talk about it. So when you heard about this 19 page later, you read the content, you saw it out there, it was confidential, what did you think? Well, that 19 page document was also followed by another document that came from the Francophone section. Mm -hmm. 11 presidents of uh, the amateur league also resigned. So uh, you see that it is something that is taking, is picking up fire. Um, the first thing that came to my mind was uh, the question whether it was appropriate for a vice president to call the attention of the president to existing pres problems within the, the confederation. The federation. Mm -hmm. And uh, you see, as you rightly put it, this letter was uh, titled confidential. So why would you incriminate somebody who has written a confidential letter to the president? If the letter leaked, is he the one who leaked it? Because if he wanted to leak it, he would not uh, style it confidential. He made it confidential so that it should be for the attention of uh, the president. Mm. So I think that um, that aspect of it has to be very, very un understood because Mr. Njalakwan's uh, um, intention seems to have been to draw the attention of the president to these problems that were plaguing the federation and uh, have him address them squarely so that uh, future occurrences should not, uh, should not come. But uh, what we saw after was, uh, was really sorry, a sorry case of uh, management because <coughs> A document that is addressed to the president mm -hmm. in all confidentiality gave rise to an administrative de decision, a suspension. I, that's what I don't understand because this is not something that was intended for the public. Mm -hmm. If it leaked, it is visibly not Mr. Angela Kwan's problem because when he wrote his letter, he made it confidential and sent it to the president. So it is within Feka Foot, from my own understanding, that leakage must have come from the fake food circles. And uh, if that happens, I don't see any reason in what the fake food executive did by suspending this gentleman because they said it was uh, a breach of his moral uh, or obligation to. Mm -hmm. And the laws of fake food, they say Article 4 and 6, you stated that you don't, he does not supposed to do something like that. No, 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 no. The, I don't think the fake food laws say that you should not draw the president's attention to some to any existing ill. Uh, the, there is there's no such thing. There's the, uh, the, the obligation to uh, to to reserve your comments mm -hmm. publicly. Mm -hmm. He was writing a confidential letter to the president. He didn't make a public statement. He wrote to the president. So I don't think that uh, that the citing of the article ties with what Njalakwan did, because what he did was to make a catalog of all the problems. Mm -hmm that he has seen and which the president seemed not to have been seeing. And uh, call his attention to it. 
Now, instead of this gentleman looking at this thing with his executive, they instead decide to ask him to shut up, which means that there is something to hide. They have something to hide, and that's why they don't want him to, to, want him to talk. Barrister, when we look at this later, this later, is, it, it really shows that things are, are not going well. It's stating different levels of things that are not going well, Mr. President. There's corruption, there's match fixing, the bonuses have not been paid, the slept, uh, player slept in hotels, and the budget was too much, the Faker Food has not paid. Like, it listed a, lo a lot of problems. Faker Food has what interest in putting out such a letter, which it instead exposes them. Um... Mr. Angela, what Mr. Angela Kwan wrote is uh, just the chip of the iceberg. So I take one of the aspects that he mentioned. Players uh, uh, lodged at the hotels. Mm -hmm. I am personally privy to a matter where Faker Foot lodged certain teams in Limbe, in hotels in Limbe. Mm -hmm. Until today, they have not paid the bills. Mm -hmm. I, wrote, I personally wrote to the president. I sent a belief to them. Until today, nothing has been done. They don't want to pay. I mean, you see, Njela, what Mr. Njela Kwan is talking about is real. Now, look at the case of Bambutus Mbuda. Fake a food stands up and says, we'll give you two days to pay uh, the salaries of workers. And it looks like Bambutus uh, uh, um, players have had their salaries. So people start asking themselves, what do these people want? So it looks like there was some mafia organization going under and that they wanted to use as a pretext to disqualify this club. No, I think that there is something that has to be done about this uh, Mr. Ito's management. Because, like I was saying, I saw another letter where 11 presidents of Amateur, the, uh, Amateur League were asking for his resignation. So if you have that one coming up, then you have Mr. Angela Kwan coming up. There is really a problem. Anyway, Mr. Angela Kwan was not asking for Ito to resign. He was asking, he was laying down the problems to look for a solution. So we could look at that in a positive light. That he yes, was asking. No, I, I yeah. see this gentleman, he, in my opinion, he did what was correct. Okay. He did not make a public statement. He wrote to the president a confidential letter. For the president to consider this letter, this confidential letter, as a public statement that violated Mr. Njalakwan's uh, duty to remain, uh, to, uh, to maintain uh, uh, the position of. Yes, uh, uh, to, 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 to have some reserve in, mm -hmm. the, in his comments. Mm -hmm. That is not correct because the letter that is it's as if. Mr. Uh, Eto is asking people working with him never to say anything. Okay. It's like it's like he's telling them, I don't want to hear anything from you. Just sit and watch me do what I, don't, I want to do. Because it's only rights to him confidentially. Why would he, why would he take offense? Why? It is not a press conference. It is not a letter that was posted on Facebook. It's a confidential letter that was written to him. So if it is breached, if that confidentiality is breached, he should look at his services and find out who breached it. Instead of taking offense at this gentleman. Thank you very much, Barista Ashu. Mr. Kepe, uh, um, when you heard about this thing, you read about I, I sent the 19 page later. I saw you also commenting on the journalist forum. You read about this later. What was wrong to you at this point? First of all, it was confidential. Later, we saw it in the limelight, which pointed a lot of problems that were going on in Feka Food. Should the president have taken this thing in good light? And then, because Mr. Angela Kwan particularly called on him to put up a committee to do an investigation. It's like, if, if you don't believe me, that's fine, but put up a committee to check out these things that I'm telling you in order for our mandate not to be bad, in order for our mandate to be good. So uh, what, what, what went wrong to you in this, with this later game getting out and particularly getting to the level of Yaoundé and then it being leaked out? In Monelia, your question and a barrister's reaction sets me into total confusion. The letter you're talking about, was it sent to you by Tufis? No, we saw it on social media. Was that letter put on the social media by Tufis? We don't know. That's what we're talking about, a confidential letter. How did it get on Have social media? Have you been informed that Mr. Njalakon's temporary suspension was because he wrote a confidential letter to Tufis? It came FFA prior president? to that letter. I'm just... Sorry, you are the one to ask the question, <laughs> but I'm tending to ask you the question. Maybe because, because it came prior to that letter, and so okay, everybody assumed. Okay. He came proud to a letter. Mm -hmm. I'm so shocked, Barrister's angle of argument. Who brought that letter to the social media? Mm -hmm. And you are aware that after that letter came to the social media, Mr. Angela Kwan organized a live Facebook show 
insisting on the content of the letter, meaning he's the one who brought it to social media. Don't you see that as an administrator? That after the letter was leaked or before? After the letter was leaked. So if he saw it on social media... The question media, is, he he's could, the he one could. who wrote the letter. Yes. Is it a Tofis or the FA that put his le that letter on social media? We don't know. No, you should know, Madam Journalist. You, you are supposed to inform us today that it is this and this person who put such a letter. And that is, excuse me, you've Journalists asked a question. are meant to find out the truth. But you don't, you talk you, to you've the not people. gotten, you've not gotten when the truth. When both parties say no, what do you do? <laughs> excuse me. Somebody wrote a letter. That uh -huh. is where I am bitter with my brother, Henry Njalakwan. When you attain a certain level of management, you have the right to reserve. Barrister will not tell me no. When you title a letter confidential and you bring it to social media, it is problematic. So to you, is Jalakwa who put it on social media? Watching him on a live Facebook discussing the same thing makes me believe he is the one who did it. And when you read his resignation letter, when you read his resignation letter, it tells you he is the one who did it. To and the resignation letter is coming after his team was eliminated at the level of the semi-finals of the Southwest Regional Mini Interpose. Okay, so to you, it's because of the elimination that brought to the later, and then the later on social media brought him to resign from, from... I am not giving any reason. I want us to reason together. Okay. Because... What I'm to say, your question and a barrister's reaction sets me in total confusion. He's leaving, he's making people to think it is the FA president who put the letter no. on social media. We have whereas, not said that. whereas you gave what a follow-up question that of that. what in no, I'm talking about barrister. Mm -hmm. That his analysis. Mm -hmm. His analysis. Mm -hmm. Because if I was the FA president and I saw my deputy president ranting on social media, I will suspend the next minute of follows. I will you suspend should, you. Would yes, I will suspend you first. to the next minute that follows. You would expect there that are organs, there are internal first. organs. He wrote a letter, yes. Mm -hmm. The president has not reacted the way he wants. There is an, there will be an executive meeting. That those, that letter should be presented to the body. Okay? Talking about presidents who are residing left and right, to me, is a no event. At this point that we are talking, Cameroon football is sick. Samuel to met Cameroon football dead. If we are even talking to this, because since tw December 2019, we started feeling a feel of Cameroon football. Mm -hmm. The management has ne not been at its best, even in the days of Mr. Iya Mohammed. Cameroon football need to be rejuvenated and Cameroon football need a stubborn person to lead it. What is stubborn we'll come person? To what, that. Do you, what do you mean? We'll come to that. Talking about the content of the letter, mm. I think Mr. Jolakwa needs to go back to school to learn administrative writing. Why do you say that? Because his letter had 90% of the unnecessary. If you read the first two pages, you don't read an administrative writing like that. You go straight to the point. You don't beg. You don't cry. If you read the first two pages of his document, it's a nonsense. Present the point and stay quiet. Even his resignation letter has a problem in presentation. You don't write 19 pages to your boss. Who has that time? Bosses don't have that time to read those lengthy literature. Barrister is best place to, uh, to tell us that. Yes. So... There's a lot of problem. I believe my, my, my younger brother, I'm trying to call him my younger brother, has been misled. He's a football actor. Mm -hmm. He knows how football is managed. It is not only in Cameroon. Most of us who are uh, sport fans, we enjoy the game being played on the green turf. But the backstage is total mafia. It is not only fake food. You go to CAF, you have the same thing. Even right to FIFA. I believe my brother Henry has been poorly, has been poorly advised. Okay. I just pray the days ahead, he think he rethinks 
and try to do some amends. Okay, so we're going to talk about what you expect him to say uh, 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 during his press conference. Probably he takes things back to your, according to your angle. Thank you very much, Mr. Ashu, for, for throwing more light on that particular topic. So, um, Sango Jaba, let's talk about this. When you heard about when you heard about the later 19 pages, you read the content, everything it carried. So far, people were expecting a lot from Africa food. They are still expecting. Many people have been happy with the things that have changed since the coming of Samuel Little Feast. Early one, early two, people can dream that Cameroon football can change to a certain level. Then this later comes out. Even though back doors, we have been hearing some fishy stuff. We know not everybody supports Eto fully. Definitely, we have those that are fighting against him right up to date. So, so the talks behind behind bars or behind the door did not really mean anything because it always happens. But now with an official letter coming out, staple, staple confidential, and then we we'll read the content, most people began to get worried about what they read and its effects. So you, when you actually read this letter, what did you think? And, uh, and panel, fellow panel, panelists, as I said earlier, that uh, the coming of a tour, Mr. Eto as President of Africa Food was a blessing to Cameroon. Blessing in the sense that um, truly he came and met the Federation at a very difficult situation, especially from 2009, when we have been having temporal uh, management committees. And um, he has also this letter, the arrival of this letter has also made him to understand that where he is is different from what he thought. Secondly, um, as a technician, it is true that it is true that many are expecting a lot from him because of his experience and the level of uh, football mastery that he has demonstrated in the field of play. But management of football is something different, something totally different. Um, when my brother says he needs a stubborn man and so on, you know, those are not right words for us to use in in, um, in, in things, in very important and delicate things. Uh, a, a nation, Feka food is, is a body that covers a nation. We don't take um, try and error issues when you are talking of things that are very sensitive, com complicated. So um, what the gentleman put out, I uh, would have suggested or thought that the person of the food would have looked at it and even, even if they were to take some decisions concerning the gentleman, their content is very rich. It is true that um, 19 pages, it's not easy for somebody to sit down and go through 19 pages, especially if the main language is not one which you are familiar with. He's, he's more comfortable or his first language is French. So 19, a 19 page letter in English, he may not have that time to go through. But to tell me you cannot write 19 pages to the president of a food who may have very competent advisors, legal and all that, you know, it's, it's out of, I don't look at it um, uh, out of place for him not to have written that. To, to, uh, so to me, they would have, Look at what is written, and if there is a way to to you you, you contain it. Oh, okay, we have some issues. Yes, the, one of our collaborators, the vice president, has written some complaints. We are looking into it, and you you weather it down and look into it and see what can be done. But suspending him, as he was saying, I will suspend. No, you don't just suspend somebody like that. Before the decision was taken, they quoted certain articles, so. If he was supposed to be disciplined, he would be disciplined in accordance with the laws. So it, when issues come up, we don't rush into decisions. We take time, study them, 
see what can be done, and then we move on. But looking at the present state of football in the nation, I think uh, a letter like that is, is a worthy one to be looking for. Thank you. Sangu Jaba, thank you for your thoughts. So let's talk to Mr. Alfred Vadavinkle. You are, first of all, somebody in the field. You are a referee, international one, and you know how it works out there. So looking at uh, football in Cameroon, I know no, you read man, 19 pages. Um, I sent it to you before that you told me you had seen it and you read it. Um, what did you think about the content of the later and the way everything was handled around it? Well, thank you for having me on board for the second time. Uh, I went through Njera Kwan's letter, Junior, but uh, fortunately, Njera Kwan Junior is somebody I know personally. I grew, I was raised in Limbe. I knew his late father during my childhood. I know this young man. He, he's a very uh, respectful, uh, uh, sorry, I'm trying to speak German. He's a very respectable guy, you know. Uh, I don't think him writing nine pages of letter to the Pekka Food President is a no-go. Like uh, the Honorable Senior Barrister said, that letter could not have been exposed on social media by the writer. That letter came out from the source in Yaoundé because it was sent to him confidential, just like the Senior Barrister said. I cannot write a letter to the president in the same time I go on the media and expose a letter. Okay, let me make it clear. I don't want to make uh, any allegations here because I have personal contact with Jerakon Jr. Communication. The point is, the point of his anger is why the resignation letter came out on social media. You have to read through the context to understand is because the letter that he first wrote confidentially was exposed at the boss's office, which means we cannot blame Eto. I don't want to go through Eto's side. He has his own good thing that he's doing for Cameroon. He has his own flaws that most of us know. I've been in the football milieu for a long time, in the in, out of Cameroon, and I've been in and out. So there are people that I understand. Njelakwan basically wrote in the second letter, in the resignation letter, that this one is coming out because if he doesn't put it out, it's going to come out anyway, just like the first letter he wrote confidential to the president of Feka Food. So let him just go ahead and put this one himself and send another copy to the president because it's still going to come out just like the first one. On the other note, Eto is the head of Feka Food. Every organization will have our head of management. Maybe he came in, he was young, he was inexperienced, but we all learned through, a pro through the process of administration. That is the way to go out. Okay. What Angela Kwan did to put the letter of resignation, I think is based on what has been going on in the Federation which I've been in Cameroon several times. I was in Cameroon during the Chan. You remember, I was in the media. I was in Cameroon during the African Nations Cup. I was even supposed to go to Qatar, but the conditions for me to go did not meet up with my family ties. The things that I've been seeing in Cameroon when I'm there during those matches, I have contacts to some of the uh, match uh, delegates and uh, the referee associate, both of association in Cameroon, whatever they call them. They used to send me videos of matches to make a decision as a professional referee. And sometimes when I look at those, those videos and I see a referee's decision that have been made, then sometimes I ask myself, what, what is happening with these referees in Cameroon? What is wrong? I'll give my analysis what is supposed to have been done on this particular action. And later I'll get a message. That is exactly what we thought. But why would the referee decide like this? What they are doing is they are, they are, in short, they are spoiling a good system that the Federation is trying to build. Eto has done a lot of good things for Cameroon football. We are proud of that. But Eto cannot be responsible for what is happening in the various organs of the football. 
He cannot be everywhere at the same time. So Njela Kwan, if he has to put this to the president, it's the things that he has been seeing and he has been going through these things. It is normal. I am here. Look at me. I'm a black man from Manumanfe. I'm the only black referee in a white country. Why do they give me that responsibility? Because I went to school here. I got integrated, got their license, and they put me in. And they kind of, they trusted my ability to control the marriage because I've, I'm, I've, I've been well trained into the system. So if they can entrust somebody in a function, so they should let him do the job. And he should, be, he should also have an open ear from his assistants in order to absorb their problem and look for his, uh, a global solution to solve those problems. Like I said, it, it cannot be responsible for every misaction in some of those leagues. He has other important things to do on the national level, international uh, skill, on international level. So those who are down, they are there present, they can see all those things. So it's easy to work with administrative boards, work with your executive, collaborate with them to know exactly what the problems like. And then you can talk on it, but this idea of you sending a letter to your boss and the letter leaks out, that shows some kind of degree of uh, unprofessionalism from the administrative side in Yaoundé. So if I was a do, what I would do is I would need to investigate and find out how did that letter that was confidentially sent to me got on the media? Who is responsible? That person has to be sanctioned. We, we are talking of serious sanction. That is exposure of internal affairs that have never been, discuss, been discussed. And somebody just put it out there. This looked like a sabotage on Gerard Kwan Jr. Because on the letter, he stated that his life is even threatened by some of some people who are trying to put their noses where it doesn't belong. And if you want to speak out the truth, it is normal. I know the system. I've been in Cameroon several times. I've helped the federation. I've given the referees football, uh, tricots, boots. You know it. I was in the media. I had seminars in Boya and Limbe. I had a general meeting. I called all those people. I tried to educate them with video analysis, how those things are done. This is done in order to help our in order to help our administrative system and to develop our skills in Cameroon football. I wasn't doing that because I expect something from them. I'm doing it because it's, it's my country. I have an opportunity to be in this position. So to empower people, it's not necessarily coming and give them like what Cameroonians normally do, come and drink beer, go to bar and make party. No, you empower people with good knowledge, knowledge that you acquire from a, a professional country. We are dealing with UEFA. I work with UEFA, European Football Federation. I was named a delegate last summer. Uh, Mr. Jabba can confirm that. I was appointed. I did not have an application to go and look for the job. I was called upon by the Football Federation. Please, Mr. Afreta, we, we want you to delegate this uh, international competition. I was with 12 different referees who came from different countries in Europe for a tournament for a tournament that was held in Austria. And this was a female league to select an African, a Cameroonian, who has never been that kind of milieu. It was new to me, but I had a list of what I was supposed to do. My president sent me a list and talked to me on the phone. This is your function. This is what you are going to do. You are the management of this referees. You stay with them. This is your hotel. This is where you are going to be. And I spent two weeks of my time out of my home. And we don't have financial issues. Everything you do is transparent. You write your bills, you give to them. Within 48 hours, your money, your money is back into your account. Whatever you spend, you get it back. Then I start to imagine the opportunity, if we have the opportunity and give it to a, a normal Cameroonian, my own brother, sister that I know in Cameroon, they will sell you a bag of cement for 25000 instead of 5000 that I know. Because that is the norm. That is the mentality that we, we, we Cameroonians have. We want to achieve what we don't work for. And if somebody is there who is trying to be transparent, they don't like you when you are transparent. That is the issue with Jeraquan Jr. This man is very outspoken. He's a nice, soft guy. I've met him. We have been in football studio. 
We met during the African Nation Cup. I was even in the v VVIP. But this guy even refused to come and sit inside. He doesn't want to sit, to look in that high class of... I was like, let's just move. He said, no, I'm comfortable here, sir. You go inside, you finish, you come. I was like, okay, as you wish. I never saw him in the VIP room, all those free champagne, whatever people are consuming. He was never there. So, Fred, thank you for sharing us so your own view on this. Um, Barista, let's talk about this act legally. Looking out the confidential letter, when it's supposed to be from one end to the other, legally, what does it entail? Is there any repercussion? Is there any something? There's an investigation that we, digital where everything is tracked, first of all, so it can be tracked. Is there anything that can be done legally? Well, um, legally speaking, why the, the first question I'll ask myself is whether Faker Food has a disciplinary committee. Because uh, if Faker Food had found any fault with what Mr. Njelakwan wrote, he ought to have been taken to the dis disciplinary committee, mm -hmm. which will hand him a query. You have to query him first, he answers, and then they take him to the judicial committee where he has to defend himself. None of that was done. We just had, we just saw his letter, then suspension. Mm -hmm. The other meeting that was held in Limbe, that is the meeting that was held, it was not discipline committee. He was never queried. Like the other speaker said, uh, Mr. Angela Kwan himself, seems to have said that he never leaked the correspondence. Mm -hmm. When he wrote his uh, resignation letter, he said, well, let me send it to social media because if I don't send it, he will still find himself there. Meaning that he didn't leak the, the original one. So the leakage, you know, there was a time here when documents were being leaked from the presidency. Mm -hmm. Before a decree is signed, it, is already, it was already in social media. And uh, it took a lot of public outcry for that nonsense to stop. So I think Fika Foot is also having his own fair share. They have to put some order in their secretariat and make sure that documents intended to be confidential should remain confidential. And uh, don't just look for scapegoats. Uh, I want to differ, differ from my brother who said that uh, we need a, a, a strong head person at, at Fika Foot. No, sir. A, a manager. You don't need, a manager does not need to be strong-headed. A manager is a father. You understand the problems of the people working with you. And you manage them according to the rules laid down. So that's why I was talking of disciplinary committee in Fika Food. They should follow the due process. Was Njalakwan being considered as a worker? He is fourth vice president. Does he have a contract with Fika Food? Is he on the salary or what, what, what? If he is a worker, then they have to follow the disciplinary procedure before doing anything to him. Now we only see suspension letter. Now, Faker Food has never complained that that document found itself in the social media. But Njalakwan has complained, which means the problem is coming from Faker Food. Because if Faker Food complained, then Njalakwan would have been indicted for having published that thing in social, on social media. But I think that uh, to be very fair, I don't like the way Mr. Ito handled this uh, this issue because his uh, conduct seems to be uh, another way of telling people I don't want any nonsense around me. Shut up, don't say anything, which is not it is not proper, because if you are working with people, the reason they are your collaborators is that they can see what you cannot see, and bring it to your notice. If that doesn't happen, who else will tell him? Who else? He will find himself on the campaign trail being uh, confronted with these difficulties which nobody told him about. So I think he, would have, he should thank his uh, stars that he has somebody like Njala Kwan who could muster the courage to write to him and say, Mr. President, look, look at what is happening. Instead of uh, mishandling the thing by suspending him for what? What has he done? Is, is the Simple act of writing to a pre to a president. Jalakwan was fourth assistant president. He is also a president. If a president writes to another president, it's an offense. 
Probably they suspended him because he also went live on social media. But no, that was. Uh, came, he came after. He came after. Yes, he came, came after. after the document was already yes, out. Yes, he came after. So mm-hmm. I don't see what this man did that was wrong because he, as a president, it is like conversing with him. If he cannot meet it too because he is in a, any other plane, he puts it in writing and makes it a confidential mail. I don't see anything wrong with that. So uh, the management of that affair ought to have been better. They would have looked at you with a cool head instead of taking a sledgehammer to kill a fly. Okay, thank you very much, Paris. Uh, Mr. Ashwa Kepe, let's talk about the meeting that uh, took place in Limbe after we saw this later, a couple of days after the later uh, leaked out. We saw President Samuel Etufis went down to the southwest region, met with other stakeholders. Uh, Jalakong was not there. A- and after the meeting, then we saw motions of support that were written and then we saw the suspension later. What do you think about the meeting he held? What, what would you would have What would you have expected? After listening to all the other speakers, nobody has been able to tell us who leaked the letter. Yeah, and nobody nobody is telling us that uh, the suspension from the F is because in Jalakwan wrote a letter. It came immediately yes. after that. It uh, came Mr. Imi- Akepe, Mr. Me. Akepe, one thing, at least all of them, That's from what, what they have said, all of them are certain that it's, it leaked from Feka Foot. It's not Samuel Leto, but it leaked from Feka Foot. We, so. we should be able to separate Samuel Leto and Feka Foot. People always think that everything is Samuel Leto, but they think it leaked from Feka Foot. So you they, think... They think mm-hmm. it's not a legal evidence. Okay. We are talking about something... Ver- I'm still insisting that my brother Henry has been poorly advised in this sh- issue. Okay. The problem is not writing the letter. The problem is a confidential letter. That has been my argument from the beginning. Okay. A confidential letter being discussed live on Facebook. But it was already out. Excuse Everybody me. Everybody on social media saw if it. If I saw a letter, my letter on social media, mm-hmm. that I am not the one who have posted it, my reaction is different. Probably At that particular level, Jalakwa. excuse me, that's what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. He has advisors. Because after the letter came, was seen on social media, he made a life yes. buttressing on the content of his letter. Mm-hmm. Okay, so to, to me, you, it was that a was problem. the problem. It was okay. a problem. Okay. And up to this moment, we know that he has been, he has a temporal suspension. Mm-hmm. He has not been dismissed. Sure. Because this is the same problem one, uh, one of our talented go players have with the national team. Mm-hmm. He's been sanctioned. He himself announced his retirement and people are accusing other people of chasing him. It's just normal for somebody to be sanctioned. Mm-hmm. Suspension is a normal administrative sanction. Mm-hmm. It's a different between suspension and, and dismissal. That is even in law, clear. those things are diff- differently. That is clear. So there is a problem. If we are saying it is not a two who put the letter on social media, then as a player, he has the right to be annoyed. That what was meant for him from because he knows the source who, from whom it's coming from it's so his first question should go to the person who sent it you get it mm-hmm. okay a so meeting was that held was the meeting. a meeting was held in limbe mm-hmm. madam journalist mm-hmm. have you find out from mr herring jacob why he was not there was is it that because he was not invited or he deliberately stayed away he was because not i believe i believe that meeting there are some members who participated on zoom yes but he was not informed i spoke with him you are saying he was not informed mm-hmm. okay the reason why he was not informed, did the figure four tell you why he was not informed? Definitely not. You didn't get that information. Definitely you should get also that information. So that we treat this issue when in a balanced way. It's just like a, a legal affair that is going on. Not everybody will talk to you at a particular time. They will tell you, wait, we are handling this thing. And we'll are you telling you. us that the FA tell you that you should wait? Definitely. We got to their communication department and they said they are going to talk on this matter, but not now. <laughs> this is a very... Uh, silly and uh, very uh, tricky aspect Mm -hmm. and in this game somebody will be a loser and already we are counting losses definitely we're already counting losses to go to the point of suspend activity and a a, a center that had children we cannot really some people don't measure the level of damage that one second anger decision can cause okay uh, I still maintain my point that I'm very sorry 
that Mr. Angela Kwan took all the decisions he has taken. And uh, so he is not rational. To his all the, 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 by choosing the social media for communicating the way he communicated. All what he wrote as problem. There are no new problems. Everybody who has been keen with Cameroon, following Cameroon football knows those problems. They are there. Even before him and his friends came in, a good number of problems were already there. Okay? Mm -hmm. Since the Nations Cup 2002, Cameroon performance at all competitions have been dismal. True. The 2017 victory came as a surprise even to the players themselves. A good number of Cameroonians were not even sure Cameroon would qualify level of the polls. So Cameroon dismal performance is not only at the arrival of a two. Local football has been in existence for close to 10 years. The problems, that's why, when I said we need a stubborn Mr. Akepe, person, we these need problems, as you said, have been existing. Yeah. A new mandate came in. Yeah. You know, with the arrival of Ito, everybody knew that, like, they were expecting that so many things are going to change. Mm -hmm. And they saw it changing. Mm -hmm. So, definitely, many people will expect that some of these things that we used but to see, you will not see them. Emanuela would. So, some people are probably shocked that these things are still happening, which you term them normal, and they have been happening, and they should still be happening. Because most people think like the Messiah is here for this and is to be handling that. Until the cause of a disease is identified, you cannot treat that disease. Okay. Okay? Mm -hmm. A good number of people, those delegates who stood behind it to, to support him, thought they were going to delegate him when he wins. Okay, so, so that is it. What that, that the is problem the, we are having today problem. is back office. That is the main problem. None of those who are telling us the truth. Okay. I mean, none of them. We have listened, we have read Njalakwan's side of the story because he has written it. Mm -hmm. It was not yet written his own. Mm -hmm. And he had decided not to talk. Definitely. It that's makes that's it very complicated. So, whatever Jomo want to be so balanced now, we are one sided. True. That is true. Most of those guys who stood behind it too knew very well that when he wins, they are going to tell him because he doesn't have the experience. Management experience. That is the point. All the noise we are getting today is because A or B is not obtaining what he thinks he should be obtaining. Oh, so they want it is not the interest of Cameroon benefit. football. It is the interest of their, their, their bellies. They should stop deceiving us. We look at most of those presidents who said they have resigned, even before it came. How often were they paying their players? Football, uh, football investors should not deceive us. If you create a team, it's a business. Mm -hmm. You should be able to put in place your running capital. Mm -hmm understand mm -hmm. so a majority of those presidents I'm saying a majority of those presidents who are crying today even before it took him how frequent were they playing their players i am not saying it to is a saint no but the problem it too is facing today even if it was metro ashu myself ashu akepe who was there i will face those same problems even maybe even worse no, i will solve them eh? <laughs> me i will solve them i won't face them even worse the problem of Cameroonian football is not what they are presenting to us. The Rifi, our brother Tambe, says, has said something. The problem of Cameroonian football is not what they are presenting to us. The back office part of football is more, is 70% than what we see on the green top. I, I think in the later he spoke about it. He spoke about the match fixing, corruption, infighting, uh, those who did not support Eto, those who supported him are maltreating those who did not support him because they are like, this is our time in office. And we know that, we have noted that in, in Cameroon, in different offices, like when your person or the person you supported is put in place, then you maltreat the other people who did not support the person in place. That's what CPDM has been accused of maltreating those in SDF because they did not support this. But like he's the president for all and not particular people. I think it's not even only for Kafu who is going to rule that. Uh, Emmanuel, a, a majority a of those delegates disease. who supported it to betray Sedum Bombonjea, with whom they were eating yesterday, how can they be claiming as if they are sent today? We know that they are not, their interest is not even the players. Their interest is their individual pockets. It's not Cameroon football. If not, we wouldn't have had a period of close to 10 years without local football. Honestly speaking, the presidents, most of those presidents are not sincere. The problem is not the person they're pointing fingers at. My problem is for a, a, at a certain level of administration, there are things you don't do. 
that I saw my brother Henry doing with social media. Most of those people who are offering his, their platform to Henry don't love him. Most of them don't love him. They're not helping him in his communication. He has a point, but how is he conveying it? That is my problem. Okay, so to you as a channel, that is a problem. It's not that it does not exist, it's the channel. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Ashua Kipe. Uh, Sangun Jeba, what do you think about the motion? Uh, uh, first of all, the meeting which took place in, in Limbe a couple of days out after the letter leaked on social media, and then we saw President Samuel Eto went down to Limbe. When uh, uh, people saw him, I went down to the street to talk to a couple of people, and they were very happy. They say, this is what Cameroon lacks. Like. Most people have complained about that with our own president and some ministers. Things happen on the field and they don't go down. Nobody, they sit up there and they don't go down to the field. So most people were happy that President Samuel Eto went down to the southwest because of that letter. As he saw it, he went down to say what happened. But what happened after? Some other people got confused that, but he, they thought he was going down to have a meeting to talk with them on how a way forward. Instead, they saw a suspension later coming out. What, what do you think? Are you in the same light or you think probably that's the way to go? There, there is a Bible saying that says, by their fruits, they will know them. You'll be known by your fruits. Uh, so what has happened? And we are dwelling more about who leaked the letter, who this, the... No. I think the football, the standard of football and the competence of, of the football administration is, yeah. is not good. It's in question. Okay. Let us see how the... Let us see how the, 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 the issues that have been raised is it true that those things are points that are affecting uh, the, the smooth functioning of the football association? If they are, address it. The gentleman has been sanctioned. Go and find a new page. They are not in a new page. Let us see all the, 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 the national teams have been eliminated. We risk also being eliminated in, in, in the, the Nations Cup, which is coming up. There are so many things which are play. If you tell me FIFA also have problems, CAF also have problems, they have mechanisms of solving their problems. And their problems are different from what is going on. It is not because uh, I, I, I could not pass an exam. Then I'll say, Peter also failed. Peter's father may have a, a special teacher, evening teacher, who is assisting Peter to pass tomorrow or the next exam that will come up. I don't have anything. I'm comparing myself with Peter. No. Address the issues that are affecting uh, football in the nation. Don't say people are, look, when you are elected as president, people don't want to hear that uh, opposition was, they were sabotaging my administration. There's nothing like that. They are looking forward to the person who is on seat to see what he can do to, to, to take the, pro the project, the organization, whatever it is, forward. In the US, the best time we see good administration is when we have a divided Congress, when the president is of one party and the Congress is of another party. They are forced to come out with a compromise. I believe, even in that letter, that gentleman said he appealed that they should meet members of the former administration, because some of them are still football operators. See what they can do to, if it's reconciliation, or to work with them. Just because of peace, unity, and to see that football in the nation move ahead. The highway that you are taking now, how, how successful is it? The highway is not helpful. You have not succeeded. All the national teams have been eliminated. The, the level of scandals in the uh, regional uh, helpful in any way. It's not something of uh, Mr. Eto was right or Mr. Kwan was right. It is what do we do to see that football in the nation, locally, nationally, and internationally, is improved. I, I, I don't have time to be bothering myself on who leaked this or who leaked. It has been leaked. It is out there. What we should deal now with the content of the, is the content proper if the, if the content of that, that the, the, the what the confidential letter is is in place 
look into them and see solutions that can be. Or if there are other ones, in fact, maybe Mr. Angela is not the only, only person who has uh, brought up issues that are affecting the smooth run running of the football association and football. It might not be suspended or he has retired, he resigned. Let them sit down or set up another committee to look into those things. Football management is different from playing in the foot in the top. There are two different things, especially when it concerns the nation. And a complex nation like Cameroon, which is bilingual. His appointments, how many people are there who are English speaking? In the national team, those who are playing, how many people who speak English there? In the competition, are all the 23 players playing? There are some players who go for tournaments, maybe in the last 10. Sometimes, too, we should think about regional. I mean, try to see uh, the efforts of uh, those, the, of the fathers of the of, of bringing a nation into one. What was their, their dream? Don't push the other people. Don't it, let them feel not included in what is going on. Thank you. For your contribution i want us to watch this short video let's watch um uh, the technician should play this short video is about the match uh referring that mr angela Kwan was complaining about is just one in many to see what is happening and then uh, mr afra you will give us your take on this and then we'll come back we'll talk about solutions to this issue let's watch this video we'll be right after that <laughs> Uh, please come.
studied it when you watch this match was it really exaggerated because there are certain small things that can happen and people let it go but there are certain things that can happen and then people feel no this is too much it's like the the little drop that has just fell the glass what do you think about just this fraction the whole video is too long we cannot play it on the program we don't have time for that so give us your view as a specialist on this issue and you, you tell us like why is it going on thank you for this question manuela I have been having such a uh, such videos in the original league uh, to give my opinion uh, on video analysis. Uh, what I actually saw here is in the first offense where there was a yellow shirt player who went to the air on two defenders, on two defenders on the red. I believe the red shirt is in Jeraquan's team. On that action, it's an off offensive foul because I don't know foul is <laughs> I don't know it's English or German now. If a player goes in the air intentionally to land on 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 a defender, he provoked this offensive uh, attack. It's supposed to be a free kick for the defender because he went on them. It's not the other way around. So which means because he looked for the contact, he provoked the contact. He knew it was going to happen. He looked for it. You don't penalize the opposite team because a player looked for an action that he was looking for, like going to somebody in order to come into body contact and throw, fall on the ground. You cannot go on that. You have to give it to the other side. And then the second action where I saw a yellow shirt player, players pulling at the goalkeeper, the goalkeeper had the ball. Please, this is extremely weird. In such a situation as a professional referee, you have to blow and go in and put the players away, put the goalkeeper aside, and have a word with them and continue the match. There is no point for a penalty kick or a red card just because the goalkeeper had the ball and the player were, were pushing around. I see there's no offense from the goalkeeper. Then I've seen another point where, uh, where is that? Where the foul on the red shirt. Okay, okay, one important thing. When two players, commit the same offense at the same time both of them committed the same offense that they went on stretch legs and they attack each other in this case you cannot give a foul on the disadvantaged team because all of them commit the offense 50 50. that is what i saw i saw that there was a, a, a yellow shirt player on the floor like you see and there's a, 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 a red shirt player on the floor they both committed the same offense. In this manner, is what we call a referee ball. We call it a Schiffrichter ball in German. A referee ball is not a foul from any player from the other side. But I, I think I, I'm seeing a red card there, which is not called for. That is not called for, which means and it's, it's based on the referee bias mind to, to decide who to be punished. This is not a FIFA rule. You can't give a player a red card for such an action. It's not called for. They both came 50-50. So when I saw this match, it was clear to me, even if you have to give, you have to do something, it has to be for the uh, for the yellow shirt player, not for the red shirt player, if at all. But to be on the side of, look at that action, to be on the professional side, you don't, punish no player because they committed the same offense on both sides. There's a rule in the field. He who committed first is punished. But in this case, they came both at the same time, like punching. Two of you punch at the same time. In the case where the first person punches, different. The person revenge is different. They are both going to have red cards. But on the report, the first person who punched is going to have a more serious action than the person who went on self-justice because he was provoked. There's an argument here. I think the uh, senior barrister in the legal uh, in the illegal field knows what to do in such matters. Uh, we as referees will make judgment on what we see okay. and we make our match report based on the physical action and the intensity of the action. Okay. Not everybody contact is look upon as a body injury some players fake it to see a refresh action okay and if you keep falling for that 
then you're, then you're not like, doing a good a good job like as a referee 15 cards if you can fall into their prank okay thank you very much for that analysis i think it's just one in in probably 100 of what is happening since everybody does not really go to the field to watch the matches that are going on and this should be a serious problem do you think it's because is, is it lack of training or what is the problem why why would referees have a particular match a referee has more than five or ten faults that so many people see even those who are not sports fans like they look at this and like no no this is why would the referee somebody who is uh, uh, supposed to be a professional have so many faults it's not just this match but like many matches many people have been complaining what do you think is a problem do you think it's a lack of uh, uh, professionalism they, they are not trained somebody's saying probably they're not well paid so uh, probably it could have an effect yeah actually uh, what i saw and i read is uh, in Cameroon, they have, uh, remember, I had seminars with the referees. Uh, you were in one of the seminars in Boya, I think it was two years ago. I talked to players, give me your questions, I'll answer them, I'll ask you questions. I want to know what is happening in Cameroon because I've always been here. I've been watching matches that are below my level of satisfaction. Even the match delegates who are sitting, supposed to be watching the referee, they are making negative comments on the referee who are supposed to be their student. In the field of profession, you're not allowed to do that. That is what they call professional uh, professional secret. You don't criticize a referee during a match as a match delegate. I read an article where referees have a lot of connections with certain people in the federation. Some referees are not physically trained. They are not physically fit. They are not mentally fit. Referee is the only hobby or profession for those who don't know. Listen to this. Is a only profession or hobby that we do written examination every year if i don't write and pass an examination i will not i'm not going to officiate matches for the next season if i don't pass a fitness test i'm not able to participate in the next season physical test is very important they test your level of physicality the strength your ability of running they test your psychology in a written examination if you are still in, in, uh, in conformity with the rules of FIFA. From what I know in Cameroon, which is my country, I don't doubt it, some of these referees, they have connection with people who give it the match. They give referees who don't come to off regular to training. They don't come to uh, uh, regional schools. They don't go to seminars. They give them important matches. And those who are always there on the pitch, on training, physical examination, they are 100% fit. They don't give them important matches. And the way you take such guys like this, they're spoiling, the, the, in short, they're, they're diminishing their, their affiliation for the young players, diminishing the standard of football in Cameroon. It is horrible when I look at those videos. It can't happen. It can't happen here in Europe. Why? Because if you do that, in one of the video analysis, I wrote a text. I did not just call the guy on the phone. He sent me the video. I should make my analysis and send back to them. He want to use it in the regional school. I told them that they should be careful with such practices. Because if you try it here, you will be demoted two classes below. Let's say you are in secondary school from three. If you commit such malpractice, you will go back to class seven in primary school to start again. Then think about what you did, how many years it will take you to get back to this level. And if you are there in class seven primary school, you do it again. You will, you will lose your license because it's 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 a no go. It's 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 not tolerated. You have to be in conformity with the, with the rules of the game. And anything that is stated in the FIFA Book of Law, written by the International Football Association Board, is what is supposed to be respected in the field of play. I said it one time. I saw referees taking decisions that have nothing to do with the rules of the game. Based on what a match delegate came there, there was a match that was played zero to zero, and penalty kicks were supposed to decide the end result. It was a team from Boya playing a team in uh, Limbe on a second leg. I was in the stadium, and during the penalty kick out, the referee already done what is supposed to be done professionally. He decided on the side that the penalty is supposed to be kicked. And one player, you know, these young boys, they just do their mess around, just to intimidate their opponent. He went to the pole, just make a, a magic one with his hands in the air. And the match delegate has to call the referee and tell him that, did, did you see what that player did there? The referee was right. What I, 
Whether you do something with your hands in the air or whatever, how can you put belief in such magical, mystical power in football? It is not called for in the FIFA law of the game. And the match delegate told the referee, I was sitting behind, let them kick the penalty on the other side of the field. Whereas a coin has already decided where the penalty is supposed to be kicked. That is wrong. Those things are not called for. So you are making the referee look stupid by believing in things that do not exist in the law of the game. And that is, the, that is one of the malpractices that we have in Cameroon. Because people sit and make decisions that are not in conformity with the law of the game. It's not called for. Never. That is the problem we have in the, uh, in the refereeing system. And in such cases, people will easily suspect that it's on corruption basis. Because I know they are not well paid. And so they can do some malpractice in order to have some extra money somewhere. But they forget to see what they are doing to the league, what they are doing to these youngsters. They are taking away their dreams and their aspirations at the international level. Because these youngsters feel discouraged. They are well trained. They go there to give their best performance and the referee will come and spoil everything to them. It, it, is, it, is, it, is, it is totally unfair. A referee is not supposed to be interested on which team wins or which team loses. You are just supposed to officiate the match based on the rules of the game. That is what counts. Because me being here as a black referee that officiate only white people's matches, it's not, it's not an easy task. Because I've met a lot of black footballers. When they see me, they try to use advantage, thinking that hey, the referees are brother from Africa, maybe it's going to favor us. Hey, but I have more eye on them because in this case, the federation is putting a serious eye on me because they know that maybe three or four black players are playing this team. He's going to favor his fellow Africans. It doesn't function that way. You commit a crime, you get the, pe you get the penalty, you get sanctioned just like the other people. It doesn't matter to me. I had a situation where a, a player from Ethiopia, he came to me and apologized in tears in my office. I told him the sanction has been given in front of 300 people. I gave you a red card in front of 300 people. You come in to beg me in, in the office. It doesn't change anything. The report is already there. The video analysis is there. It's going everywhere. You disrespected me in the field of the, in the game. When I gave you orders, you disrespected my orders because you think you are going to have special status because we are both blacks. It doesn't work that way. He was alleged that somebody called him a Negro or nigger from, 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 from the spectators. I'm a referee. I didn't hear it. You said it to me. I cannot take an action. It's none of my business. If you want to play football in Europe, you want to be a professional, you want to make money, keep those things aside. Focus on your career. Don't get intimidated or get angry when somebody call you the, the black name or whatever. That is when you play the best of your football. I always advise them, please. Go to YouTube, search for JJ Okocha's video. The advice he gave to the youngsters. The more they racist me, the more I dribble them. He was, he was better off during his insults. And that is the talent I'm using. If you call me, a player can never call me a black, a racist name. Never. It has never happened in my eight years of free career in Europe. No football player, white player has ever called me. They can say it in their stomach. <laughs> I cannot hear it. If a, if a spectator says it, it's a spectator. Most of them are drunk. They just come for their phone. We don't listen to spectators. But if a match official, trainer, or who, a medical doctor of a team, whoever team official to do the team, they cannot do that. They have high level of professionalism. If you try that, you are gone. Because I have the license to do what it takes to sanction you. Yeah. The question now is, do the refreeze in Cameroon have that power to, to give those sanctions? Because they are under pressure, they are being intimidated. Yeah. They have they have other referee colleagues who have uh, who are favorable by the federation. They can easily take you from this match if you do those things. And one time I even heard in Limbe, I saw a video that was sent to me that a, a match delegate or whoever, a match president, a team president came to the pitch and seized the, the ball during a tournament. Seized the ball. Mm. I talked to the uh, one of the uh, referee delegates. I said, my brother, listen. If a club president enters the field during a tournament because he's angry or what reason, how did he even pass the barrier to get into the pitch? That's the first question. Don't you have security? Yeah. The referee is the head and the controller of every match. He is the boss. He decides on every aspect of the game. He has authority over the coaches, authorities over the president of the club. They have no business in the pitch during 
an officiating uh, time of the game. How did it even get there? It, those things are not called for. You automatically lost the game. If he sees the ball at the end of the match, it's no problem. It's the home team. The ball always belongs to the home team. But he said, no, sir. He sees the ball during the tournament. I said, what? The security can just bully him outside, just carry him outside somewhere and go and put him somewhere in the police station and and let the match continue. The after that, he will get the sanctions. Those things can never happen in the Western world. Thank you very you see, much. When you see those videos here, it kind of uh, just expose the negative aspects that we have in African football. And I always advise these youngsters, please, when you are in Europe, just emulate the system in Europe. The African mentality, keep it aside. It's training, it's 2 p.m., you have to be there 10 minutes before 2. Time waste, time does not wait for you. And you have to comport with the rules and regulations. Yes. That is how it functions here. You have to be respectful, respectful to everybody you meet, your opponent and everything. Okay. I mean, Thank you very football much, is sir. welcoming. It's, it's a... What we call diversity and unity. So People come from different regions with different mentality, with yeah. different uh, different backgrounds. You know, but when we meet in football, we what the only thing that got us are the rules of the game. After the game, you go out, those who are Muslim, they go and hit their head on the floor. Those who are Christian, they need and they read the Bible. But in the in the field, we all respect one law, the FIFA law. Okay. That is what unites us in the field. Thank you very much. Thank you for giving us your own view elaborately on this particular topic, referring, which I, I think is a, is a serious problem. Uh, Barista, one of the referees resigned yesterday, stating match fixing and that the, the, the level of control, like you have so many people, the pressure, as he's talking about, you have a huge pressure on you. And when you don't do it, you have a problem with this side or whatever. They are not going to take you for the next match. Uh, since they are the ones, the match delegates, they fix the matches and they choose who, which referee has to go there. Finally, you're not choosing to do the job because you do not respect this side or this side. And we have referees uh, uh, who complain about it. One of them wrote a letter and he actually resigned. This sector, probably this is something that uh, Fekafoot needs to really look into because this action is really spoiling the local leagues. Uh, Emmanuel, I'm, I feel very shocked to see this type of images on the international scene coming from Cameroon. Uh, Faker food really has to do something about that match. That match ought to be replayed. Uh, th that's, it's a shame, I mean, to have that type of thing go down in, in record, on record, that uh, it's come, if we won match from Cameroon, it is terrible. And to have a president complain about this type of situation and he's sanctioned. Oh no. No, 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 no. That, he, 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 that no. was not the main, <laughs> no. the main thing he said in this. No, no, no. You see, he complained about this match and he, mm. you sanctioned him. No, no. You see, when you talk about the refereeing, I saw something like uh, Southwest referees resigning or something. Yes, a couple. Hmm. One particular one wrote an official. I saw, letter. I saw, I saw a letter mm -hmm. written by this. Well, supposed. And he listed some of the things that were yes, like match fixing and all that. Yes. And uh, it's very disturbing because some weeks back we learned that uh, the fake food president signed a contract with a gaming, an international gaming syndi uh, syndicate. Yes. One ex bet. Mm -hmm. And that uh, FIFA was uh, investigating the matter. So when you look at that and you come and see that they are complaining about mass match fixing in the, in the professional league. It's very bad. It's very disturbing. The betting uh, game. It's, it's, yes, it's very... Because match fixing goes with betting. Yeah, it's gambling. With gambling. So, uh, I want to think that Mr. Angela Kwan was very correct. He was very correct. His approach may not have been the best, but uh, what he did was commendable. Uh, going on social media to defend what he did was not correct. Closing his academy was We're going to come to that out point. of place. Okay. That academy was created by his father. Mm -hmm. Not because of the Tufis, by his father. And it has been doing a fantastic job. No, he said he was suspending their activities and that probably after... No, he should, not even touch, he should not even dream of touching that, that academy. Okay. In fact, look, he, he has done a great job. Something that nobody has ever dared to do in this Cameroon. Talk to the, talk to the untouchable president. Because that's what he, that is what he is. The untouchable president. He has told the untouchable president, look, these are things that you ought to have been looking at. Looking at. 
and you are not doing anything about it. Um, I said earlier that some presidents of professional of uh, amateur leagues resigned. And you see, these things they, they may seem minute, but they count. You have referees resigning, a club president resigning, a whole league, amateur league, resigning and asking for the president to, to resign. No, but don't forget. Those are things that count. They Bar count. Barista, did you see the motion of support from the Northwest and the South? Uh, please, oh, look, uh, Emanuela, let us not fool ourselves. What did Mr. Ito go to Limbe to do? He went to Limbe to undercut Mr. Jaraquan's support base. That's the reason why he didn't call him to the meeting. He went to Limbe to make sure that he isolated Jaraquan from the support base. Because that was, that's, all that is bad. Coll collaborators. Yes, I saw party. him complaining somewhere that uh, the people who were with him were no longer. No, no that their, is bad. Their names are Divide and rule is bad. Their names are on the support. The, the motion. It is bad. That's bad. I mean, if there is a problem, fix it. Don't try to divide and rule. You see, look at look at the type of images. Mr. Ito comes up and we are all clapping that he's trying to erase the standard of Cameroon football. Look at the sorry images we are seeing. Five red cards against one team. We had the opinion of, of an international referee there. Those three red cards, there's none of them that was deserved. In fact, there was one that ought to have been given to the opposite side. No, 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 no. I think uh, the refereeing, there is something that has to be done. What do you, what do you think should be done? Do they we have international referees here. Academy or something to train these referees? And then uh, 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 he spoke about some of them not being well paid. You no, know, I'll come to the sanction hungry, side. They say hungry man is an angry man. Mr. Eto came up with salaries for, the, for players. Mm -hmm. I think he should address the issue of salaries for referees. For referees. Okay. He should come up with an impartial referee appointment commission. Impartial referee appointment commission for every region. So that we see this nonsense should stop. Take measures to, to avoid match fixing. In fact, I think that the referee should be appointed uh, on the night of the, the, of the match. The night before the match. Because when you say... Uh, there's a match in a week's time and they know the referee. They have the opportunity to go and, to go and contact him. The night, they, they, they know the day of the match. They don't know who is referring. The referee should be appointed at night. So well, in the morning. Probably the morning, because in the night, a lot of things can happen. <laughs> Between night and morning, you don't know what can happen. <laughs> yes, the period should be as short as possible so that you avoid, avoid match fixing. Because this is terrible. Nothing is being done. Nothing. No, I think it's a sorry case. Thank you very much. Mr. Akepe Ashu, what do you think should be done in order for <coughs> this kind of refereeing situation that we see? Not good in any case, but this is a problem that probably needs to be brought to the limelight and then uh, be spoken about. Before we here today, I will still come back to this point. Till this moment, there's one thing we know. Mr. Angela Kwan Jr. has been temporarily suspended. Yes. But nobody is telling us if his suspension is because he wrote the letter or it is the way he communicated. We read that he has been suspended. Mm -hmm. What are the laws of the Supreme Court that were stated? Because that is a message by the trying to get because he wrote the letter. It's writing letter is not a problem. What the point he said is true, but is was he suspended because he wrote the letter? Is that what was stated in that suspension letter? Let us give the right information to the people. Because as he is rightly stated in his letter, football is a uniting factor. Mm -hmm. We should not use it. For he is an opinion leader when it comes to football. He should not, we should not use it to scale up another crisis. Yeah. So we should give the right information why he was suspended. I said it here, that's as an administrator, there are certain things you don't do. That if he was my vice president, and I saw him on social media talking on in-house problem, I would do the same. Suspension is not, dis is not dismissal. It is time for us to put you aside before she had a managing crisis. Go together. To come to, to referee, when I watched that video, I was laughing. I was laughing because that, as you said, is just one of the numerous mm -hmm one of the numerous and uh, that's why I asked is it is, was he so annoyed that it, because it concerned his team and because he is who he is what about other teams that do not have people like him 
It is a very sad, uh, it's a sad event to see the way referees are behaving. Yesterday I asked one sport journalist to tell me how much, if he has, a, she has an idea, tell me how much they pay referee to see that they can be doing match fixing for how much. They are destroying the future of young Cameroonians by doing that. It is a shameful affair. Uh, our brother in Austria was talking about, we have seen how Cameroon national team at international level have suffered those level of injustice. It is not only a problem in Cameroon, it is bad, but we should not make a secret of a problem in Cameroon. There are videos, we go to YouTube, we're going to see videos in Europe of funny refereeing. I've given an example of Cameroon at the international level. We watched the World Cup in the 90s. The World Cup in France, 1998, how Cameroon was eliminated by useless refuse decisions. It did not take place in Cameroon. But that is not, that does not mean that we should caution. Saying refuse should be informed a day or the night or the morning. If I'm in Douala, I have to officiate a match in Garoua. And they tell me in the morning, at what time do I leave Douala to Garoua? We will know our poor transport network. I think each and every Cameroon should be, should have a conscience. Because if we have gotten a point in this country where we do not have conscience again. We think only of our stomach. We fail to understand the action we post today will affect even our own children the next minute. In Cameroon, people don't think of the community. And of tomorrow. Of tomorrow. We do things as if we are going to die tomorrow. We do things as if we are, we are on transit in our own country. <laughs> because no normal human being will behave the way that referee behaved. Okay? Because some people think I am here to say, it, no, it is not an angel. What I'm trying to say is that the problem we are seeing today, maybe they are out because we have somebody like a to there. These things, and the majority of those today who are complaining, they have benefited from these ill practices. Maybe today, the tap from which you wanted to fetch more water has been closed. That is why they are making order. They are not making this known for the better of Cameroon football. I keep on saying this. The refrain, I don't know, it's a mindset. Poverty is mindset. Because if you behave like that, you lose your personality. Nobody, you lost your nobody will trust you. Yeah. And that's the problem I have with my head brother. You lost your dignity. You lost your dignity, my brother. Nobody will have confidence. I went to a client and one day he told me he wants me to give him our company customer portfolio because he wants to invade the market. I asked him, Mr. Customer, what if the ties turns tomorrow? I am no longer in the company I am working. And there is an opponent in your company. You need a manager. I come and apply. Will you recruit me? When will fully that I exposed my company customer portfolio to you? Will you recruit me? He sat like this and looked at me for 10 minutes without talking. I told him, I need customers. I need to make sales. But I have my integrity to protect. And I've said this to other recruiters when I go. They say, no, you should come with your customer portfolio. I don't prostitute with customer portfolio. The customer portfolio I have in this company, I recruited it within the image of that company. If you want me in your company, give me what I need, and I will use your image and recruit your own customer portfolio. Very few people will be like that. Our people lack integrity. It is not the issue of the president. Look, at that particular moment, neither the president of the, yeah. the FA or his bureau members were there. Yeah. Southwesterners themselves are destroying the football in their region. We should sit up. We should sit up. They have no patience. That is crazy. To be honest with you, if that game was played in another state, I don't want to name the town, that referee wouldn't have left that speech <laughs> alive. <laughs> Honestly speaking. It's, it's sad, but that, that's the truth. Like, I, yeah, know, but I know places that it would, it would Attacking be Attacking the referee will not, will not bring a solution to the league. Uh, Attacking the referee will not bring a solution to the league. It is true. Those are... 
It is not because the immediate it is effect because the we see it happening. As if the institutions are not there, it yes. is because you and I, who are in the institutions, yeah. decide to do what we are doing, and they know nothing will happen later. So they take justice in their hands and they they handle them. Which it is a whole. It is it is it is so big that an individual alone cannot handle. It is too big that an individual alone cannot handle because begin from where you are. We have uh, clean up campaign days <laughs> in the whole of Douala. <laughs> People get up and sit in us and don't clean. Yeah. And they expect angels to come down from heaven to clean. There are people who go and sit in front of their ch shops, just sit till midday, then they, they, go, they open their shops. It is sad to see such images in, Nobody. <laughs> in 2023, honestly. But that is just a tip of the iceberg. Mm -hmm. Everybody should sit up from the list to the management. I believe the turmoil that is going on now even those who are in charge in managing the football affairs knows now that all of us will have eyes on them, the, man the managers. I read on one uh, sport page this morning where one sport analyst said, sport president dropped their players during halftime so that they should lose their games. Imagine that. That they give when the players come for halftime, they give the stuff that have been dropped so that when they go back to the pitch, they can no longer play. I did a screenshot. I have it here in my phone. I will send it to you so you can send it to those experts. They should see. Mm -hmm. That's why I say those presidents who are crying like that is not for the betterment of uh, those players. Um, most people are expecting that sanctions should be taken on Rufin, like because this thing has gone viral. See, suspensions were taken. On, there are a lot of sanctions that are taken to are refer, up, uh, on the freeze. Uh, see, it's a good thing, but uh, the referee should be checked and probably suspension should have been given to the referees, but we have not heard anything. Do you think something should have gone in that I light? think uh, there is a list of close to 20 referees that have been suspended. There's a list of close to 20 referees that has been suspended. Mm -hmm. We should go beyond that. If you should take legal actions against them, we got to stop this. this probably set an example. No, no, they should take legal action. Mm -hmm. But I believe the FA Fika Food has suspended close to 20 referees from all football activities. It should be made, and those, those I'm kind talking of about, information okay, should be... talking about one is bad, a gaming... When you watch UEFA's in the European leagues, those have companies have are all sponsors of yeah, football. They, they always have it's all those companies. Here. Yeah. We, should, we should look at... They even have what more. Should, what they even should, have more. Yeah, what should interest us is the content of the contract. Because I read somewhere where they say the contract relating uh, with one Isbeck and Fika Foot, one Isbeck is not going to put uh, the games played in Cameroon for gambling. What should interest us is the content. How much is it bringing out? And what goes to who? I think that's what should be included. But saying that it is an uh, act of law, we see them on all the stages <coughs> in the world, at all levels. Yeah. It's a source of income. Mm -hmm. But then it is the ethic what is in the content that should interest yeah. us. Yeah. Unfortunately, none of us have the content mm -hmm. of that uh, the, the, the contract. Okay. Thank you very much. We don't have very much time. I want, I want, on I the want to say something. On, I want to add a proposal to make for this refrain thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I think to curb this uh, match fixing, mm -hmm. we can uh, advise Fika Foot. They appoint the. There are four referees, right? Four mm -hmm. referees. Mm -hmm. Okay. The main referee should only be should be drawn on the pitch by the match delegate among the four. So that you don't know who is going to be the main referee. All four of them come, then the match delegate draws eh, by draw. The person who is who is pulled will be will be the the the, 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 the central referee. Corruption does not need ten <laughs> Corruption does only ten hours. The very the, the only thing is that each and every one should know yeah, that we have a responsibility to maintain this state in and one to build. Home. There is no action that is too big. We should not think that there's particular action that can cause the collapse of a state. Mm -hmm. And there's no action is too small. That's what I'm saying. The FA has there's a list of close to twenty players have been uh, uh, refused that have been suspended. They have to take legal action. We have to go beyond and that. And they should take them from all the regions. Yes. So that she said the example. It should not we just have to be go from one side. No, it's not only from the southwest. Yes. They they I don't think the list. No, it's not only from southwest. Okay. From, Mr. Kepel, we don't yeah. have very much time on the program. Uh, Sangon Jaba, talk to us. What do you think about uh, the decision by Mr. Jalakwan to close the school? 
for this moment, you said they were closing, uh, closing the school for this moment, and that probably if things change later, the school will be reopened, and that the young stars who are there, the footballers who are there, are going to be inserted in other academics. What do you think about that move? Well, it's an unfortunate situation that um, uh, decisions like that are taking, which ha have a lot of impact and effect on, on the lives of young, the young people. But again, we still cry for. Uh, I stressed on on way forward concerning this matter, because uh, where that Cameroon was cheated in this. A certain match in France or America, uh, we are not comparing with things that are negative. We are trying to improve. We are trying to compare with things which are positive and can help us move ahead. If take a food, I still insist. If some the content of those the the the, the nineteen page write up, if there are things there that can improve on the standard of football in the country, let them look into them. If bosses were, were promised to football uh, presidents, if structures were promised to football presidents to help them manage their teams well, let those structures be put in place. It, it, I mean, I think Mr. Ito has a lot of experience, which some of these things should not be difficult for him to, to implement. He can always set up working committees. Those things, they must not necessarily be done by Pekka Foods. He can always look for technicians. He can look for middle ground. He can even look for people in the opposite team to look at some of those things. Like they were saying, that even the contract for the one, one sport, is it one sport, nobody knows about it. Of course, he promised transparency in his administration. And even when he signed it, he came and had a press conference. This is what we have done. This is what we have done. The national team will be giving the boss. Uh, where are those promises? If the things are not forthcoming, let him call a press conference or set up a committee to see how those things, those things can be fulfilled. A lot of things are just hanging in the air. And if, if, as I say, if the content of what that gentleman writes, if they are true, then Cameroon football is really, really sick. It's really, really sick. And I, I, I will not blame the young man now for closing his school because he sees no future for those children. He instead sees frustration in their lives for what he, he will be doing. If the, if the content, I still repeat, it's unfortunate that uh, it's a 19-page letter, which maybe if he knew that it would be leaked, he would have uh, summarized it and put them in point form. But if the content of that 19-page is really looked into, anybody who has patience and time to look into to it, 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 is, it, it shows the level of degradation of football in the nation. Let something be done. Let the stakeholders, let the stakeholders, let them call a meeting, look into what is really going on. Because it's not helping us. Whether I defend Mr. Kwan or I defend Mr. Eto, it doesn't help progress of football in the nation. It is true we all have to accept what the refereeing or the whatever, the club presidents, there is something wrong. And I will not say no, it, it happens in other countries. So, no, in other countries, they may have structures to check certain things. They may have uh, 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 committees. They may have inspector general who are independent, who move around the various uh, regions or leagues to see what is going on. And who are sent there maybe after one month, two months, three months, to see if things are really uh, true. And if possible, the same as, as uh, National Bureau members moving around to see if things are really in conformity. But the level of, of um, <laughs> points which that gentleman wrote, no, 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 there's something wrong. Thank you. Yeah, yeah I would like uh, to say something to, about like the free uh, the system uh, that could better the... Yes, Alfred, I was to come to you. Go ahead. We're talking about solutions, way forward. What do you think is going to happen in the next... Yeah, campaign? of course, uh, as concerned the free, um, what the, I, the whole idea I had was to work with the free federation system in Cameroon, mm -hmm. not pick a foot. 
we have to separate two entities here. You have Fekka Food that gov governs the football uh, board in Cameroon. You have part of it, which is the free football, the free uh, uh, association, which is totally uh, different. The whole idea is when you have the free nominated, nominated for certain matches, they have to come from different regions. For example, a referee can come from the far north to officiate the match in southwest, and the assistant may come from from Manu, and the second assistant may come from somewhere in the Boloa, and the, match, uh, the uh, fourth official match delegate can come from another region. They don't know themselves. Most of my referee colleagues, we don't know each other. We only see our name on the list, and we meet in the office one hour or two hours before the game. So, there is no room for any uh, corruption. I mean, it is not possible. There's a lot of transparency. You have a match official that is watching the match taking reports. You are killing your own career as a referee. What happened is referees don't have salaries. That's what some uh, most people don't know. We are independent workers, licensed independent workers. You are only being paid per match. If you are sick or you are physically not fit or you have some family issues like that in the family, whatever case may be, you just write a letter or an official email. For this time, you are not able to nominate another free. You are only being paid per performance when you take action in the field. And the, the matter we should, the thing we should consider is a free is a governing body that has, that has its own leader. They have nothing to do with the leagues, with the football teams or the leagues. They're totally in different, different bodies. Our referee federation is separate. We have a group leader. My case, Gerhard Palmer, who, who is our, our, our team coach. You can talk to him one on one. Or then we have somebody who gives our matches, who also works in the federation. He is the one who distributes our matches to us. We have nothing to do with the teams, no collaboration. A referee has no collaboration with the football clubs. Never. It's only in Cameroon that you see that mess. That's why we're in the pit hole. That is what I try to tell them. Referee, Mr. Barrister, uh, you are a legal head. Correct me if I'm wrong. If a judge is in court and they bring in criminals from where he doesn't know them, he judges them based on the evidence that are presented to him. He, he The judge did not know this uh, criminal in person. He doesn't know the lawyer in person. He doesn't know the defendant or whoever is brought in. He makes his judgment based on the, on the evidence brought in. And the lawyers are there to defend their clients. And he makes judge, the judgment. That is how referee function. We have no, no association with football clubs. You come to the pitch, you introduce yourself. I'm the referee, I'm this, I'm the referee for today. They bring you to your office. You have everything online. You check the addresses. You go to the pitch official. You tell them how, how you function. You have to tell them how you function. I'm an African born. In the pitch, it's in, it will speak German. But I tell some foreign players, he who cannot speak German, you can speak English or French to me. For foreign, some foreign players who just who are just coming in, some of them have difficulty in speaking the German language. If you saw him in one of my interviews in the in the German magazine, the title was, I am the boss. I decide which language is spoken in the pitch. So long as I'm here for 90 minutes, everything goes on me. You walk, pay my, pay my rules. So if the, the referee has that power given to him from the Federation to officiate a match, there is no team that can come and influence you. My brother, we are, you are working on your career. Refree is not your main profession. You know what I do for a living. Refree is a hobby, part-time job that gives me an extra, extra. Today, tomorrow, you can drop that game. You can get injured. You are no more refree. Where's your dignity? You are going to take a few hundreds of thousands to spoil it. Don't forget, we are living in, in a digital world. Everything has a dark base. If you put my name data database, you see how many matches have officiated, how many red cards I've given, how many yellow cards I've given, how many match reports based on what I've given. All those are database. 
always there. You can always write my name. You will see everything. So there's there's no secrecy. We are transparent and open. If you give a player a red card, there must be a report because most red card to court. My brother, I've gone to court to this country and I'm tired. You go to court on a red card, certain red card. If a player insult another one, it's a court matter. You spit on another player or you spit on me, you are insult me, you threaten me. Those are court matters. They have nothing to do with football. No, we go to court. Oh, you look at my report, go to Google. You see how many red cards I've given. Half of those red cards have gone to court to defend them in front of the judge. Before, if those sanctions are not given, are not ameliorated in Cameroon, those things will continue. Refuse are also sanctioned. If they make wrong decision, a referee has been blocked by a player in this country, and the referee has a what they call judo belt or whatever they call it. He boxes this player. The police came and arrested the referee from the pitch. As a referee, you are not supposed to do that. You are a professional. If a player hits you, there are security. The security will rush in. It happened to me. I've not. I'm still in court fighting for my money. That will be paid by next month. I have a letter from my lawyer. The court had decided that Mr. Alpha will become this because I had a punch on my stomach. I put on the on the forum. They gave me a big interview here. That is how I, I got blown in the country. People know that, okay, there's a black refugee from Cameroon. Because there are laws that got, got a refugee federation. There is no room for corruption. We are being punished if we commit wrong decisions, we commit crimes. Okay, imagine a refugee is a part-time job. You have your job. I'm a technician in the company. Your views without we don't really have much time. We'd have listened to you the whole of today, so we'll just go around the table. Last words, Alfred has already spoken. Sango Jaba, what do you think? Uh, he has to have a uh, can things be, be be can things be taken back? And uh, let me just finish with those in the diaspora. I'll come back, we'll end in the studio. Can things be actually reversed? Jalakwan has to have a, a, a conference, a press conference on Saturday. What do you expect from him, and what do you expect from Fika Food in order to solve this problem? Last words, let me. Um, I thought, oh, okay. So, so, are you asking me or Mr. Ashu? No, but, I'm asking you, Sango Jaba. I think, um, as I say, I am somebody who is uh, positive. I like moving ahead. I am not, I don't look at complaints and lamenting mm -hmm. and no. We are moving ahead. Uh, left to me, uh, if we really want progress in our system, they can ignore the points which the gentleman has mentioned, but they can still set up a commission to look into what is the cause of the falling standards of football in the country. There's something wrong. Things are not, I mean, we should be truthful to ourselves. We will not come and say, oh, um, the, the the federation is better than it used to be. No, it's not better. It's getting worse. So let us be truthful before he's, he's coming into, you know, in based on the system I know here, when you have a four-year mandate, you have two years to govern and two years to run, to prepare for whether the campaign or for the next administration which is coming. So his two years have gone. And nothing has been achieved. And in fact, at, at, at this point, he has been placed in a position, or the team, not Mr. Ito, the team has been placed in a position to evaluate themselves if they want to help the nation. So at this point, to me, they should set up a commission to look into what is causing the mess into the system. What can be done so that we move ahead? We should forget about what has passed. If, uh, well, it is left for members of the committee to think of what they can do with Mr. Kwan. And um, if, they want to, if they want him to come back, well, it's okay. If they don't want him to come back, that's fine. A new page opens, but they, we should be moving ahead. He has made his point. The points are clear. It's unfortunate that not many people are patient enough to go through 19, the 19 uh, points. Maybe that's why he may want to have a press conference to explain what he meant. And why people are thinking that he leaked the letter or he did this or he did not behave well. Well, that too, anyway, 
it is left for him to see whether it, how he will handle it, the, the press conference. But uh, I think it's a sol solution is what we need now. And it, yeah, the way forward to help the nation. Otherwise, uh, look, it, Mr. Mbappe, Mr. Mbappe is around. He has come and he has said he has come to assist the local community with so many things. That is how things are supposed to be. I wish other professionals were also following such examples. Because there are some, we have, uh, uh, okay, there's another point. We have uh, uh, professional schools, uh, academics, academics, sports academics. You don't see what they are doing. They, are, they, don't, they, they don't have, they, some may not even be legalized. Some don't even produce one player, one good player, marketable player, or players who are assisting in the local leagues. But they, they brag around as academic. Mm. So there's a lot of things which um, I think Fekafu needs work. There's a lot of work there to be done. A lot. Thank you for your view, sir. Mr. Kepe, last words on this. What do you expect from uh, Jala uh, uh press conference? And what do you think should be the next step of Fekafu in order to actually fix things? My message to my brother Henry is that he still has a place at the Fekafu. That his decision to close that can whether it's temporary or what is not the very best. You should think of about it to open that academy. It's no longer his academy, it is our academy. <laughs> Point of correction. Yeah, it is no longer his, <laughs> his it is ours. Yeah. Because <laughs> maybe he had a dream of my child going there tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And he has cut that dream. Uh as a manager that he is, I don't know why he hardly presented his resignation. Because he still has to be there. It is his team. They have to fix it. Cameroon football is sick. They did not meet it in good health, but they have the responsibility yeah. of bringing it back to good health mm -hmm. because they are the investors. <coughs> he knows what is in the back office. Mm -hmm. As concerns the referee, I think uh, I've heard uh, said of something. In Cameroon, the referee commission is part of FICA Food. Maybe we might try to to subcontract that commission so that they work as an independent body. <laughs> but that would take a who while. will bear the cut? <laughs> that is a problem. So that's why, you see, I keep on talking about our personal integrity. Cameroonians should love their country. We should stop behaving as like if we We're are on strangers. transit. Yeah. That is how a majority of Cameroonians have been behaving, even with public funds. We behave like people who are on transit. Let us waste it. Mm -hmm. Let us destroy it. It's our it. time. After, after all, tomorrow, we, shall, we, we are, we are going there. to go away. Mm -hmm. That mentality should cease. And as you, uh, I said again, those who refuse that have been suspended from all FA activities, those who are found wanting should be sued so that others should learn a lesson. People should pay damage. We are so lukewarm in this country. We just let go so many things. Mm -hmm. Those referees who have been found guilty of match fixing or spoiling Corruption, games yeah. should be sued. So that they should answer for their deeds. There are videos. They should explain. Experts should be brought in to help the judge to decide. I think that is my contribution for today. Calling on my brother Henry to sleep and to give you a rethink. You still have a place in Cameroon's football. Thank it you It is very not much. on social media, my brother. Barrister, what are you expecting from his press ah, conference and what should be the first step? Mr. Angela Kwan is a very courageous man. I think that Cameroon needs Mr. Angela Kwan in Fekafoot. Nobody has ever had Given the courage. Given that those who are in the English speaking, those from the English speaking region are very few. In the whole country, we don't have any person who has come out with this type, with the type of revelations this man has made. Mm -hmm. So that gives me the impetus to say that Mr. Angela Kwan is needed in Fekafoot. We need him there. Maybe he was thinking, uh, thinking of, of the matter personally. Mm -hmm. But he should know that in the interest of Cameroonians, he has his place in Fekafoot. Because he is the man who has the courage to stand up to our powerful president and tell him that, Mr. President, things are not moving. So he should uh, withdraw that his resignation letter and go back to Fekafoot and fight for his people. You see, um, I knew his late father, who was also his, a man as tough as, as him, he was also a strong man. And I think that he should uh, uphold his father's heritage 
and not chicken out because resigning looks like chicken be, uh, is chickening out the, of the whole of the scene. The yes, it looks like he's uh, withdrawing. No, 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 no. It, the the boldness of his acts should be translated from start to finish. Since he stood up to tell Mr. Ito in the face that, look, this is what you are doing. When you start resigning and closing the academy, it looks like you are a bo like a boxer who is removing his gloves and uh, abandoning the, the, the bout. So it doesn't, it doesn't look nice. He should go back there and make sure that the things that he has denounced are made right. That is a correct con part of conduct. I think that in his press conference, he should announce to the world that he is reopening that academy. <laughs> my, my brother here put it very clearly. That academy is no longer his own. Okay. It is not his own. He, he, well, it's Jalakwen Academy, but uh -huh. it's Academy for Mankind because <laughs> we don't count how many children have passed there. Uh, I, I don't know. You see the person managing Opupo? Oh, okay. Because his father was, but... Uh, no, you see, this, this gentleman... I admire his courage. I want him to stand up to the courage and uh, tell the people at Fekafu that it is time for them to bring the much needed change. We all put our hopes in Mr. Eto. And if Eto, who holds a, an MBA, because people say that they can manipulate him, he holds an MBA, he cannot be manipulated. So he should do the correct thing. When problems are put on the table, let him solve them. Instead of acting like a dictator to say, shut up. I don't want to hear any, any dissenting voice. No. He should solve those problems. That match we saw should be replayed. That's, that is a, a disgrace. That's a disgrace to come on football. If Mr. Jalakwan complain about this type of match, any person who kicks against it, against his complaint, is, is out of his senses. We had the opinion of the, of the international referee. You cannot just, I mean, in one match, five red cards for no reason. No, 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 no. Um, well, we have come to the end of the program with this topic, but we cannot live here without talking about Mbappe, who is in Cameroon. He's a Cameroonian. Uh, we have <laughs> those in the diaspora that are coming back. We have Yanid Nuas on here. We have Ngannou that is out there doing a lot, and they are coming back. We have a Tofis after doing what he's doing out there. He's back home investing. <laughs> and uh, uh, something struck me with the coming of Mbappe. The, the crowd that I saw coming out, it was like, it's a great event. Some other people were saying, no, he's a son of the country. If he's coming back, why should there be that kind of fanfare every where it's just somebody coming back but others are saying like no those who have been out there those who have been in the diaspora they are trying that people should come back home and do something home and so he should be acclaimed the way he has been what do you think i think uh, football fans who are his fans are out there working where he's a football player mm -hmm. but i think he came here with a french passport that alone is something else so to me it's a new event he's a player is well known so his fans are uh, normally to cheer him up. Mm -hmm. It's just like if I was, was a football player, I'm going to move to another country, that's are going to receive me. Mm -hmm. Say he's a Cameroon. Yes, his father is from Cameroon, but he decided to give glory to the French, just as Yannick did when he was at his glory days, mm -hmm. which to me is not a good example to the young generation because all of us decide to give glory to other countries and only come back home when we are retired. It's not a good thing. Honestly, it's such habit that need to be discouraged if every successful Cameroonian had to give glory to another country and only return home, but, but when Mr. we Mr. are Kipta, most people have done, was, have tried to work with the different federations in their different fields. We remember Francoise Bango; she gave it to Cameroon, and later when she France wanted her, she did not. But when she gave it to Cameroon, you know the problem she had, and she had to stop. So people had trying to do in their country. You think if Francis Gano was a boxer here, yeah, he would be where he was? People are thinking that when they go out there, they have the more opportunities and they can give back. Should that not be encouraged? Someone need to give back, give back as a Cameroonian. Patrick Mbouma gave as Cameroonian. Not everybody Ro has that luck. Excuse me, Roger Miller gave as Cam I'm just giving from the same light. Mm -hmm. You cannot tell me that this country did not give to Francois Bango. It would be an insult too. No, they did, no, but no, they no. did not work but well. Excuse me, you cannot say. So the advantage that some of these people have, those of us, some of us speaking like this, we have not had, we are still here. Mm -hmm. It is not a good example. I'm not against him. His father is from Cameroon. He's free. He has chosen his side. Mm -hmm. But don't force it on people. He has chosen to give glory to the French. He's not the first person. Others have done so. Mm -hmm. But at the end of it, they regret. If the French can insult 
the great Zinedine Zidane, even him tomorrow they will insult him. The only place, what he has received, he just won one millionth of what he could have had if he gave this glory to Cameroon. I know how Cameroonians support their own. Are you sure Samuel Eto'o has done that? But he's not. But excuse it me, easy. what Eto'o is having is not about his footballistic anyway, outcome. That, that, that it is, is man, it's different. That is true. That is it is true. different. Mm -hmm. When it comes to when football, Roger, no everywhere Roger Miller enters, people stand up to greet him. What Mbappe is receiving today is not one one millionth of what he would have received if he gave this same honor to Cameroon. The same thing with Yannick. Yannick gave honor to the French. The lone Frenchman to have won that Roland Garros. Today he's retired. He's enjoying Cameroon. If all of us should leave this country and give honor to other countries because they have received us, what will be left here? Let me give you another analysis. I would come to the others. Um, I, when I spoke about, uh, I was talking about uh, Mbappé, some other people, let me say their views. We are journalists, we need to say what others say. They said there's probably a hidden agenda because uh, uh, it's as if Mbappé and uh, uh, Yannick Noah that have been built with French mentality. And so since they are struggling to penetrate, uh, since they are not having it their way around Feka food with Eto there, so they are struggling now to penetrate, come in another light so that they should turn their attention to them and then the attention uh, 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 which will give an opportunity for people to like them and probably put them where they want them to be for the French to have access. That, do, is, what an, do you think that is another that? fatal analysis people yes. are doing. Yeah. Samuel Eto does not need these people for his publicity. This young man has made his name. Mm -hmm. You cannot compare, just like people try to compare Samita and Rajubla. No. They are not of the same generation. True. If you do that, it's a fatal error. You compare Samuel to Mbappe, it's another lethal error. They are not of the same generation. It's father and son. You get it? Mm -hmm. It's not, they are not of the same generation. Samuel Eto has given honor to Cameroon Mbappe, has not given and will not give because he is of French nationality. But he's always welcome in Cameroon as our son. Probably he's going to live back with another passport. You never know. I just wish that as he's going to his village, they should bless him so that he wins the Champions League. Our ancestors don't refuse their children. But we keep on betraying our ancestors. By doing that, it's a betrayal. No, when going back now, he'll probably have a double passport, double nationality. He'll have a Cameroonian. <laughs> what do you think about Bapes coming? And then we're going to talk about there's this picture. Uh, Carlos, can you put that image? It, it, it gives the picture of like, there's this other generation of youths that are in prominent position and are trying to do something. When somebody, I heard the analysis when I saw this picture and uh, let me not see it on, on air, but like everybody just, just what do you think about this picture? The best thing is that they are all Cameroonians. Yes. That's Frank Beer. His face is They clean, are all Cameroonians. Frank, Frank you see, they are all Cameroonians. Uh -huh. I want to look at this thing in a different perspective because okay. our children live here and go out for greener pasture. True. If Mbappe had remained in Cameroon, I don't think he would have had the exposure, the international exposure he has. That is his today. So um, the fact that he has French nationality is for his money. Is for job. Mm -hmm. uh, the proof is that the young man, after making money, is coming back to his fatherland to come and invest. They will not tell you that, hey, but he has come, he has a project with Yannick Noah's son to open a big sports uh, yeah. complex. Joachim. You see, so um, all, all thanks now to, to, to God and to our ancestors for making this children remember their fatherland. Mm -hmm. And probably calling See, on others to come. If, I mean, can we imagine if for one, one instant whether all these Cameroonian players can play at, in our national team? Wow. Is it possible? You have Brill, Mbolo, Mbappé, uh, they cannot all play. So any person who can find a place somewhere Barista. where he can shine, Barista. please, if you can find a place where you can Barista. shine, you are welcome. Barista. When you look at the case of Yannick Noah, you call Yannick Noah. Yannick Noah was with the French because he wanted to make his money. He took the Laurent Garros. Yes, that's true. As a Frenchman. But where is he today? Is he in France? He's in Cameroon. After making all his money, he has come back home. That is the reason why we are calling on the government to introduce this dual nationality so that our children can bring back the money they have made abroad. You see, we should not chastise them for making use of uh, uh, the, the, the second nationality they have obtained because of work. What Mbappe is doing is work. He is using his talent to get money if you were you see 
if you were in Bonabere with me when I was coming, the convoy, the Mbappe convoy, no minister has had that. The convoy that was accompanying Mbappe, I called you to tell you that I was stuck in traffic. There was an armored car. There were about three or four police lorries and gendarmes in combat gear accompanying Mbappe. Who, which minister has that honor? No, you see, we should recognize our own children. It is a nice thing. Cameroon national team did not use him. The French have used him and they are giving him good money. What's my, what is my business there? Bring the money, my, my son, bring the money, come and fix your country. Yes, but but it's but it's we don't, we don't have no, to. The last thing. Yes. Uh, <laughs> nobody is in Cameroon. Uh -huh. Has he stopped him from coming to Cameroon? No, nobody, nobody stops him. Mm -hmm. I simply say he has give, he's giving glory to France mm -hmm. and not to Cameroon. Okay. Whether he has dual nationality, he's still here. <laughs> nobody has stopped anybody with double nationality to come to Cameroon. Yeah. But the truth is, he said, a president of a political party, elections come in 2025. You need people to vote for him, but I cannot vote for him. Mm -hmm. I'll be the one to vote for you. Mm -hmm. don't, so it, we, you don't, you we don't, don't know have about same, that. We she don't said, have the same quality. He might live here with a Cameroon passport. Don't bother about that one. It's conditional. <laughs> <laughs> we are talking about now. Gentlemen, thank you but very that much. Is it. So they they, they won't not, give state honors to, to The administration has no, given us no, 20 no, no. extra See, minutes he for is the program. He's a foreigner, he's a tourist. If something happened to me, the Cameroon government, yes, tourist. Yes, he's here with a foreign passport. If something happens to him, the government has to explain. So the government is supposed to assure, ensure his security. His security, security definitely. Tell, they have to please give the right information to Cameroonians. The government has a <laughs> responsibility to ensure his security. If Ronaldo comes here, it's the same thing. Mbappe is a star player. He has his fans. He has his fans. So it's just normal. It's just normal that the people should be out to welcome him. It's normal. He's his, his sports fans, definitely. Def definitely. So Thank you very much. There's nothing strange in it. I know those in the diaspora want to talk about this, but we don't have any much time. <laughs> I, many people have commented on our Facebook page. The program was live. We're also streaming live on all our social media outlets. Thank you so much, so much for watching. If you have any comments, drop it online. We're going to see. And all those who are watching will also read your comments. Tomorrow, this program is going to be reported or rebroadcasted, I beg your pardon, on Monday at 3 p.m. local time till 5. The... Uh, 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 our, our administration here added us almost 30 minutes because we had to have two hours and we took almost two hours 30 so thank you very much Mr. Akepe thank you Barrister uh, thank you to Sangon Jaba Senior Barrister thank you to Sangon Jaba and also thank you to Alfred for your time joining us today stay tuned to programs on African media have a wonderful weekend <laughs>